Hello there, my name is Stephanie Daly and I'm here today to talk to you about the Time for Autism program. I'm a senior lecturer in older people's mental health and education at the Brighton and Sussex Medical School and I'm also the mum of a 17 year old daughter who is autistic. My daughter had her diagnosis um, a year ago after about a two-year period under CAM services and uh, we were really fortunate we felt that a psychiatrist suggested that she was assessed uh, had a an ASC assessment and that diagnosis made a huge difference to my daughter to my sorry to my daughter and to me and that understanding and being able to understand her behaviour and her difficulties in the context of her diagnosis has been hugely helpful. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about my daughter, I'm here to talk about the Time for Autism programme. So moving on to slide two, I just want to give you a brief overview of what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Time for Dementia because that's the programme from which Time for Autism was taken. I'm going to share with you some of our thoughts about why we should, thought we should sit, set up this particular programme for Time for Autism. I was going to tell you a little bit about what parents have told us about their experience of medical professionals and also what some of our students have told us about their autism knowledge when they leave medical school. I'm going to give you an overview of what the programme intends to do and also to tell you a bit about how we're evaluating the program and um, hopefully in, in total give you an overview of the program. So to kick off for slide three, Time for Autism is based on Time for Dementia and Time for Dementia is an educational program that was set up at the Brighton and Sussex Medical School in 2015. It came really from a recognition that there was a need um, to both improve the amount of de dementia education, but also the quality of dementia education. And there was a need to take a quite novel approach to try to make uh, education more meaningful, not to be just a tick box, but also to think just a, beyond a single condition. So to think about dementia in the context of older life, living with comorbidities, negotiating health and social service systems. So as I said, the programme was introduced at the Brighton and Sussex Medical School in 2015. It was also um, introduced at the University of Surrey for nursing and paramedic students. And since that time, we've delivered the programme to over 3,000 students across, across Kent, Surrey and Sussex, all healthcare students from eight different professional groups. And in essence, what the programme does is provide longitudinal contact between a pair of students and a family living with dementia. So a person with dementia and a carer and the students visit over a two, period, two year period. And what we've seen from the uh, evaluation that we've carried out and the research that we've done on the programme, that the programme has had um, a positive, statistically significant impact on student, student knowledge and attitudes towards dementia, but it's also broadened their understanding of dementia. It's widened their psychosocial understanding of dementia, given them more confidence in their communication skills in working with people with for dementia, and that this learning really has taken part in a relational context. So it's been about the sharing of expertise and experiences by the person with dementia and their carer with the student. So it's in the context of that relationship. And as part of our evaluation, we've realised that this model, this educational model of long-term, long longitudinal contact between student learners and a patient or patient group has potential within other conditions. So I'm going to move on to, to slide four to talk about time for autism. So we felt when we were thinking about a, a different condition, we felt that autism was a condition that, that, um, that, that 
uh, doctors and other health care professionals would have contact with people uh, with an autistic di autism diagnosis across a range of medical uh, and clinical specialties. And, and for us, uh, we were quite keen to offer students at the Brighton and Sussex Medical School the opportunity to learn in this way about the other, at the other end of the lifespan. So learning more about children, uh, children's development, Parent, care, parent and carer concerns and particularly the interface with education. We know generally from the literature that current medical education and other undergraduate healthcare education um, focused towards autism is fairly limited and in some cases it's missing completely. We know that the Royal College of GPs has recommended that core autism training forms part of all medical school curricula and recently in 2019 Health Education England commissioned and launched the core capabilities framework for supporting autistic people which brings a statutory duty upon health and social care organisations to ensure that their workforce has the, has the skills and uh, knowledge to provide care to uh, people with autism and we know sort of more generally that that there is some uh, there's a lack of uh, evidence about the best way to do this in practice so in order to help us think about setting up this program we were we did we did some research with both medical students and with families with an autistic child so we did some qualitative interviews with med fifth year medical students and what they told us was that there was a huge um, reliance on on uh, students um, or students feeling that, that the knowledge they might have gained either from family uh, members or friends having an autism diagnosis or perhaps having the opportunity for some uh, paid or volunteer work was was really where they drew most of their knowledge about autism from. Uh, some of the students talked about the opportunity to see um, either children or adults with autism within uh, their rotations, but suggested often this was in a clinic, a somewhat artificial um, environment, and it didn't perhaps give them the opportunity to learn uh, about the condition in more depth. Um, students always also told us that they felt that opportunities to learn about autism often were all ad hoc, opportunistic. So, for example, if they were able to see an autism diagnosis or assessment taking place, they were fortunate, but that might not routinely happen. And a sense some, in somehow that maybe it was seen as less important compared to other areas of the curriculum. And they were very much in favour of um, thinking about an approach, particularly something like Time for Autism, where there might be long-term contact with, with an autistic person and their families as being a more uh, satisfactory and a more acceptable way about learning about the condition. And students talked to us about their confidence. And some of them felt that the general skills that they learn as uh, trainee doctors uh, in terms of communication skills would be very helpful but but a lot of them were quite hesitant about how they would be able to communicate with people whose um, autism was perhaps uh, slightly more severe in its manifestation or that the, there were maybe problems with nonverbal communication with the person with autism that they that would be more tricky for them. We also talked to parents about their experiences of medical care, so this is parents of autistic children, and they uh, told us a, a range of uh, issues for them, so that some of them talked, not all, some of them talked about it being quite difficult sometimes to get GP to hear about their concerns and make the necessary referral to specialist, uh, uh, di for specialist diagnosis. Some of the some of the um, parents and carers talked about not feeling listened to by medical uh, by doctors and feeling judged in some way if uh, say their child had a meltdown or the child wouldn't cooperate with perhaps an examination. Lots of parents talked to us about frustration with the system, 
So for example, having, um, you know, there being very little flexibility about appointment times, often having to wait, that could be quite difficult with an autistic child. Physical examination, so perhaps doctors really not wanting to uh, change their approach to how they may, might examine a child or a person, but that being quite problematic. So if a, a child doesn't want somebody to touch, for example, their ear, in a physical examination that being really quite problematic and again thinking about treatment and thinking about the best way to ensure that the child can or, or adult could be compliant with treatment and for some parents it was just frustration that maybe they walked into a consultation and the doctor or nurse or other healthcare professional wasn't aware that the child or the adult was autistic and hadn't thought about what they might need to do to adjust the consultation um, parents and carers also told us that it was also sometimes about the small things, so not just about all the obvious signs and symptoms. So perhaps if a parent was kind to tell a, a doctor that they were concerned about their child's restrictive diet, what that meant, so it might mean just eating cornflakes and nothing else and they're concerned by that rather than it just being a little bit of a fussy eater. Uh, parents were concerned about the potential for masking of uh, symptoms in girls under diagnosis and the need to be sort of more aware of, of how it might manifest, the, the condition might manifest itself in girls. The need really about examples of the good doctors being the ones who were really flexible, listened to the parents and recognised the need to work in a doctor-parent doctor team to get the best results and again parents were very keen to work with us and to help us set up the Time for Autism program. So what are we planning to do? Well we were planning to start the program in September 20 but we've had to delay our plans because of COVID-19 so we're going to be starting to deliver the program at the medical school in September 24 and the, the sorry in September 21 and the program is uh, set up to be a one-year program for fourth year medical students. During that year the, f the students in pairs will do free home visits to a family with an autistic child. We're also going to be looking at setting up a linked educational visit so that students can understand more about that interface with education. We're going to have some supported tree, uh, teaching uh, along that year and the focus of that is really about understanding the condition more, understanding more about diagnosis, thinking about how do you work medically, so how do you manage if a child or an adult won't allow you to examine them, what is it uh, you might need to think about in terms of treatment, so to, to really skill up uh, future doctors to be able to think much more creatively to understand, uh, to hear from people with lived experience of autism, both uh, people with the diagnosis and, and parent carers, and also to think about what does working with parents actually mean in practice. We're gonna be asking students to work with families to develop a health passport for their child. And we aim overall to improve student knowledge about autism and also their empathy towards um, both the person with the diagnosis but also the family. We're heavily guided by a lived experience group who are, who've been working with us to set up and develop the programme. And we're also going to be working with Health Education England so we can look at how this programme can be rolled out potentially to other groups of healthcare professionals. In terms of our evaluation, so we're undertaking a formal research programme to look to understand the impact of the programme on student learning. So we'll be looking at quantitative measures of student knowledge and empathy and we'll be doing some comparison between students uh, who haven't received the interventions, so haven't received time for autism, both at BSMS and at another medical school. So we can make comparisons uh, between the two different groups and look at differences between outcomes. We'll be carrying out qualitative interviews and focus groups with students to understand more about the experience and the learning. We'll be carrying out family and student satisfaction surveys. And also we'll be looking at family quality of life measures. So looking at uh, quality of life in the child with autism, but also uh, in, in the um, 
parent carer group. We'll be carrying out a family qualitative year, uh, qualitative interviews, and um, we will be publishing and sharing our results so that the programme can be extended more widely. So finally, I'd like to thank you for listening to me. I hope that this has been of interest to you. Um, I've given my email address there, it's Stephanie Daly. So do please email me if you have any questions. And also I'd like to share with you our website, uh, bsms.ac.uk dash time for autism. And we'll be sharing more information about the programme as we go along. So thank you very much for listening.